I'm Michelle Schumann, the Artistic Director of the Austin Chair Music Center, and I am videoing this from the inside of a piano. Usually you see me on the outside of a piano, but we are inside the piano today because we are getting ready to celebrate the birthday of George Crumb, uh, one of the great American composers, and he was a winner of a Guggenheim Fellowship and a Pulitzer Prize, as well as a Grammy Award, and he's really widely regarded as one of the finest American composers of the last century. And he was uh, an amazing innovator, and he loved to uh, find new sounds and new timbres from all sorts of instruments. And we are doing this really, really cool piece um, called Vox Balané, which means voice of the whale, that he was inspired by when he heard sounds from under the sea in the 1960s and he wrote this piece for flute, piano, and cello um, and all the sounds that he makes throughout this work really are evocative of these underwater sounds, uh, sounds of the whale, sounds of seagulls and various things. So I thought I would demonstrate a couple of these sounds for you. Um, it's a really kind of mysterious and otherworldly piece and I think that comes from the sense that uh, under the sea it's like a completely different world to us. So I just wanted to show you a couple of these fun sounds. Um, one of the things that he has uh, me do on the piano is depress silent notes and then strum like this. And actually it's down an octave or a couple of octaves so it makes it even creepier but I just want to show you that there. So listen to this here. where he gets the pianist to like find various different harmonics on the strings and you do that by touching on the string really lightly so for instance that was a normal note me playing the piano now here's one of the harmonics isn't that cool and if i can go up even higher that's the fifth above and then a third above that isn't that cool isn't that really neat uh sound and he has all of these effects being on the piano but also he calls for effects on the cello which makes sound makes sounds of seagulls flying it doesn't even just sound like seagulls it really it, you're gonna feel like that there are seagulls in the room that we're at uh, and also the flute player will play the flute um, while also breathing into it to make these breathy sounds also singing into the flute um, and doing various uh, different extended techniques it's an incredibly evocative work and an incredible use of tone and timbre and uh, an experimental uh, qualities that I think that you'll really enjoy. And what I've paired together on this program are two other composers. Uh, Beethoven, of course, we're celebrating Beethoven all season because of his 250th uh, birthday. Uh, well, we're celebrating that also on George Crumb's 90th birthday. Um, and what I've chosen for this concert is probably arguably one of Beethoven's most experimental cello sonatas. It's his opus 102 number one. Uh, it's in two movements and is very experimental in regards to form, but especially in regards to kind of emotional pacing. Um, Beethoven does a lot of fragments throughout, so it's almost as if he's interrupting himself or the cello interrupts the pianist, the pianist interrupts the cello not only with rhythm and melodic um, fragments, but also with harmonic fragments, um, interrupting with unexpected harmonies, going off in different directions. And we can tell that Beethoven is really searching for something in this work, really um, extending the boundaries of what was expected at the time. Where is Beethoven going? Where is this journey going to? Well, I'm pretty sure it's going to the 21st century because that's where we're ending up uh, with this. Uh, also on this program is Shostakovich's Piano Trio, um, the second one that he wrote, but his most famous piano trio. And Shostakovich, I don't know that he's really regarded as an experimental composer. Um, he was a Soviet composer, and what innovation he brings to the table is really the sense of um, finding an emotional outlet uh, that is uh, in many ways critical of the Soviet regime without being too obviously critical of the Soviet regime because as an artist at that time you were in a very um, tender, precarious position of being a mouthpiece for the Soviet Union 
uh, but needing to be an agreeable mouthpiece. Mm -hmm. And Shostakovich had an incredibly difficult life. He lost many friends, many, many family members uh, to this uh, horrible regime. And he mused, used music as this outlet. And throughout this trio, there is feelings of pathos and horror. Uh, also, incredible senses of sarcasm and um, sort of a wittiness about the reality. Um, but it's one of the most captivating works uh, in the piano trio literature. Uh, so I, I, it's just, I, I always love playing it and I always feel like I get to a different place uh, transcendentally uh, with that. Uh, joining me on this concert are Will Fedkenhoyer and Gregory Sauer, it's going to be, and Marianne Gadigian, uh, who is going to be the voice of our whale. Um, and it's just going to be an outstanding concert. I hope that you will join us. Thank you. Mm -hmm.